Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming to the weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Chanel Wallet on Chain in the black caviar leather with the gold hardware. All right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workouts, go to work, this is laundry, whatever's that you're doing, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from Numan Bakrani. Hopefully I said that correctly. I was wondering why you don't have any leather Louis Vuitton bags. You have leather and other materials from Chanel as well as other brands. So just wondering if you think that Louis Vuitton leather isn't worth the money due to canvas having better resale value. I don't know if this makes sense, but sometimes I feel since I love Louis Vuitton so much, I wanna try their other materials also because Louis Vuitton is more than just canvas. This is a fabulous question, and it's actually one that I get asked the most, and I know that we've kind of touched base on it here and there on previous Minx Mondays. Now, in general, when it comes to handbags being worth it, the way that I see it, regardless of the brand, regardless of the material, I think that a bag is worth it if the person loves it, if it makes them happy, if they see themselves using it. So it definitely comes down to personal preference because some people might think that this bag isn't worth it, but I might think it's worth it and vice versa. In the past, for those of you that have been watching me for a while, a lot of you already know, but my Louis Vuitton collection did have some Vernie, Empreinte, as well as Epi. And as far as Vernie goes, I did have a couple of handbags as well as a few small leather goods. I have since sold them. And uh, I think that the colors look absolutely incredible when it comes to the Vernie. I didn't have the best experience. Uh, there were also some pieces that I really didn't gravitate towards as much as I would have liked. As far as epi goes, I've only had small leather goods in this material, and I've said it before that when it comes to epi leather, it is so incredibly durable. I know some people aren't fond of the ridges that it has, but the fact that it is so durable is one of the biggest pros that this material offers. But again, I never had any handbags with uh, with the, the epi leather. And as far as Empron goes, I've only had small leather goods. I used to have three, now I'm down to one because two of them did end up melting, but I only have the key pouch in the Rose Ballerine and the Empreint leather. But I think that this leather is beautiful. It is so incredibly carefree. And uh, I feel that it's not as in your face as some of the canvas pieces that they have, you know? And again, the fact that it is a leather is incredible. But I feel that Louis Vuitton has so many beautiful leather handbags to choose from. You have so many different materials that you can pick from. And even though I didn't have the best experience in the past, I still appreciate appreciate them. I still love what they bring to the table, but it's no longer a material that I am interested in when it comes to this fashion house. And I'm not trying to take away anything from them. I'm not trying to take away any of the quality or anything by any means whatsoever. But for me personally, I only want canvas from this house. I feel that they do it better than anybody in the business. And when I am in the market for canvas, there is no doubt about it. There's no question about it. I automatically go for Louis Vuitton. So to answer your question, when it does come to leather, I do prefer other houses, whether it's because of material, history, or price point. I couldn't agree with you more. Louis Vuitton is more than just canvas. They have so much history. They offer so incredibly much, and I appreciate them for it. But for me and for my collection, canvas is the only material that I am interested in when it comes to this fashion house. But I would love to know, what do you guys think about canvas? How do you feel about Louis Vuitton leather? Do you prefer your Louis Vuitton handbags to only be leather or do you prefer them only to be canvas? Let us know in the comment section down below. But fabulous question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question, Krista Powers, Julia Noel, and Vicki Thompson all had similar ones, so I put them together. Would love your thoughts on Chanel handbags in patent leather. Are they worth it? How do they wear? Other things to consider. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any personal experience when it comes to Chanel's patent leather for their handbags. The only patent leather that I've had from the house has been on espadrilles, and both of those pairs of espadrilles I no longer own. However, I do have experience with Louis Vuitton's Vernie. I imagine that it would be similar. There might be a slight difference between the two materials, so I can't for sure say that this is what you can expect, this is how it's going to wear, or anything like that. So I just want to throw that out there. Now patent leather in general, I absolutely, I absolutely love it because I feel like this material makes those colors look insanely gorgeous. They're so vibrant, they're so vivid, you have that gorgeous pop of color that you're expecting, and I honestly think that it ends up capturing those colors a lot better than any other material that the fashion house has, at least in my opinion. Another thing that I love about patent leather is that you can virtually use it in 
any type of weather. You can use it in the rain and you don't have to worry about water stains. You can use it in the snow. You can use it, of course, in the sun. You know, so I think that it makes for an awesome travel bag because if you are, if you're unsure of the type of weather that you're going to be experiencing when you land or whatever your, de wherever your destination is, it makes for a great bag that you don't have to necessarily worry about in that sense. Now, there are some things that I'm personally not too fond of when it comes to patent leather. The first one being fingerprints. You end up seeing fingerprints like crazy. And with my vernier pieces, I felt like I constantly had to wipe them down because the longer I went without wiping them down, the more noticeable they were. So that drove me nuts. Another thing is that the clear coating that they apply to the bag, as time goes by, sometimes that clear coating can end up yellowing, it can end up bubbling, and it can also get a little bit cloudier. You will notice that a lot more on the lighter colored handbags than on the darker ones. Um, but if you also end up storing the handbag in a room that gets a lot of sun, you might notice a slight difference in color as well. So if the front of the handbag ends up facing the, you know, a window or anything like that, you will end up noticing that this is a lot, um, this ends up getting a little bit more dull than the backside that doesn't get as much sun. So I also wanted to throw that out there just in case. I talked about it briefly on my storage video. If you guys are interested, I will also put that on the description box below. I also feel that the material ends up soaking up color a lot easier. So if you are wearing uh, dark denim and if you do have a light colored handbag, you might be able to see that color transfer a little bit more or if you end up setting your handbag down next to either an, like a newspaper or a magazine, something that has print, sometimes that print transfers onto the handbag as well. And the last thing that I want to talk about is that if you do go onto the pre-love market, if you check out any of the Chanel patent leather handbags, they don't seem to have as good a resale value as some of their other materials such as lambskin or caviar. So again, if that is important to you, if that's something that you look for when it comes to luxury goods, that's just something to keep in the back of your mind. But still, I absolutely love patent leather and I appreciate so many different aspects about it, but this has definitely become one of those materials that I appreciate from afar just because of my previous experience with Louis Vuitton's Vernis and because of what I talked about, but it is still absolutely gorgeous. And with those colors, whew, it looks amazing. But I turn to you guys because again, I haven't had any personal experience with uh, Chanel's patent leather. I turn to you. For those of you that do have handbags in this material, how do you find it? Do you find a difference between Louis Vuitton's Vernis? Let us know in the comment section down below. The more information, the better but fabulous questions and hopefully I was able to give you a little bit more info. Next question from Diana Ding. Have you ever walked into a store and bought a bag you never planned on buying or even knew about previously the same day? I got the Louis Vuitton Neo Monsu this past weekend as an early Christmas gift for my lovely boyfriend when I absolutely fell in love with the structure and pops of color after trying it on. Up until I walked into Louis Vuitton, I didn't even know the Neo Monsu existed. Well, first and foremost, major congratulations on your newest bag. And as far as walking into a store and buying a bag that I didn't plan on buying or one that I hadn't heard about before, yes, that has happened. It actually happened with Gucci last year uh, because initially I had gone into Gucci because I had done some research on the padlock I absolutely love the structure. I love the size. I thought it had a great price point. But when I went into the store and I talked to the sales associate and after trying it on and seeing how it works on my body frame, I decided against it. She had actually mentioned that the material that um, is mostly made up of this bag ends up showing wrinkles very, very easily somewhere with, with like within the, the first or second time that you end up using it. So she said, if that ends up turning you off, if that is a deal breaker, I don't recommend this bag. So as much as I liked it, I passed on it. And while I was there, I ended up, um, I ended up buying the Gucci Dionysus. Now the Dionysus, I had done research in the past and uh, I thought that it was beautiful. So I ended up picking up the Dionysus wallet on chain in the pink pebbled leather with the crystals on the hardware. It was absolutely gorgeous. I actually ended up doing a video on it and I will put it on the description box below if you guys want to check it out. But while I was at the boutique, I also saw this beauty, which is the Petite Marmont Wallet on Chain. Now they didn't have it in this color, but I ended up ordering it through Neiman's the same day. So I ended up buying the Dionysus in the store and I bought this one. Uh, so I was just waiting for it to, uh, to be delivered. And then I was going to choose between the two. So as many of you know, I decided against the Dionysus and I ended up keeping this one. And I absolutely love it. I've said it before that this wallet on chain, I think has an awesome, awesome price point. I love the fact that it's all leather. And I also feel that it is a little bit more spacious um, in comparison to the Chanel wallet on chain. And I also like the fact that it does have a built-in mirror and you can also take off the chain. So I feel like this guy definitely offers quite a bit. But other than that, I think I think that this is really the only one because for the most part, for the most part, I feel I feel that I do end up um, 
researching every single bag to death. You know, to the point where I know I drive my friends and family crazy because I'm talking about it so much. You know, I sit there and I think, well, what if, what if this, what if that? I try to envision the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I try to think of every possible scenario. You know, I know that that might seem a little extreme, but I believe me when I tell you that I literally research it to death. I, I watch as many videos as possible. <laughs> I read as many threads as possible. I mean, I turn into a complete stalker, you know? <laughs> and sometimes I feel like that's part of the fun uh, because once you actually get it, you're like, yes, yes, I can really see what they were talking about or what have you. But uh, even then, you have to have the bag to really know how it's gonna work out for your lifestyle, right? But um, yeah, that's this is the only one that I can think of because even looking at all of my bags, um, yeah, I always, I've known about them or I've done some type of research, but this guy literally came out of left field. I never knew about it. And uh, I think it is by far, you know, one of my, uh, one of my favorite uh, Gucci pieces that I, that I own. But um, yeah, that is uh, definitely my story. But I would love to know, have you guys ever walked into a store, has a bag come out of left field or a small leather good that you didn't plan on buying and now you have it in your collection and maybe it's become one of your favorite. If it has, let us know in the comment section down below or if it didn't end up working out, let us know that as well. But once again, major congratulations on your newest bag and hopefully I was able to answer your question. Next question from Julie Sun. I have two questions. Have you noticed any color transfer from your red Chanel mini onto your light colored clothing? My black leather Chanel backpack stains my white shirts. Also, I know that you have a price limit for Louis Vuitton canvas, but what about your Chanel Deauville? I love that bag, but it seems to be a lot to pay for a mostly cloth bag. Do you find it to be worth the price? Um, all right, so fabulous, fabulous questions. Let's start off with the Chanel minis. I brought out the Chanel mini reissue and the aged calfskin, as well as uh, the red caviar. And I personally haven't experienced any type of color transfer onto my light colored clothing whatsoever. For the most part, I do end up using either white t-shirts or gray t-shirts and I do like using these bags crossbody and like I said before I haven't experienced any type of color transfer so unfortunately I'm not uh, I'm not very helpful but if any of you guys have either with minis or any other Chanel bag let us know in the comment section down below uh, because I really haven't heard of that too much and uh, it makes me very very curious but again if any of you guys have let us know in the comment section down below now as far as the Chanel Deauville I absolutely love that bag it's very versatile and just in general I I think that it is a fabulous, fabulous tote. And uh, I was a little bit surprised. Well, not really, let's be honest. Uh, I was taken back by how much they have gone up in price because about a year, a year and a half ago, the price point for the large, which are the ones that I have, was uh, $2,900 or right around there. And I was recently looking at their Cruise 2020 collection. And um, let me insert a picture of those bags very quickly. I know, I know, it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea, but there's just something about them, especially the one on the left, that, um, I don't know, I'm kind of crushing on it because it's so different from anything else that I have in my collection. However, the price point for the large Deauville from the Cruise 2020 is $3,900. But as far as this price point goes, um, it is a price point that is no longer in the runnings for my wallet. You know, because the way that I see it, for a couple hundred dollars more, um, I can end up going for an all leather handbag like a good size all leather handbag from a different fashion house, you know, but I absolutely love this bag. Like I said before, it's become one of my most used. I love how versatile it is. I love the fact that I can fit absolutely everything in it. it makes a great travel bag. Uh, but as far as new collections go, this is now a bag that I will end up loving and appreciating from afar, you know, and I'm just very happy that I was able to get two of them in my collection at a different price, but I still think that they are absolutely beautiful. So again, it's worth it if the person sees themselves using it, if, they, if it makes them happy, then absolutely. But um, yeah, it was, I mean, I, I knew that the price increase was gonna happen, you know, we all, knew about the, the Chanel classic flaps and the boy bags. Uh, so I expected the Deauville to go up in price as well, but I did not expect it to go up to $3,900. I mean, four grand for, uh, again, this is for the large size. I don't know about the smaller sizes. So my apologies for not being able to provide you with that information. But uh, yeah, it was like $4,000, technically $4,000 for, you know, for a 
mostly cloth bag, like you said, but I still think it is absolutely gorgeous. So fantastic questions, and hopefully I was able to help. Again, I know I wasn't very helpful with the color transfer, but if any of you guys have any information, let us know in the comment section down below. Next question from Jamin Kwan. Hopefully I said that correctly. What are your thoughts on the Louis Vuitton twist? All right, so before I get any further, let me insert a picture of this bag right now. The twist is available in a variety of different sizes, different colors, and details. It is an absolutely beautiful handbag. It has a very sleek design, which I appreciate. It's also very versatile. It's very easy to dress up and down. I absolutely love the structure. I am crazy about the structure. And from the looks of it, it looks to be quite comfortable as well. One of the details that I appreciate about this bag or this style the most is the fact that the majority of the ones that are available do have the epi leather, whether it's all epi leather or whether it has some type of epi leather, just because because it makes it that much more carefree to the point where you can use it in any type of weather, no problem. This epi leather is so incredibly durable. So I absolutely love that. They also have it available in the crocodile and the crocodile I do believe starts off at 18,000 up to 25,000, if not a little bit more, if I'm not mistaken. So again, you do have your choices of the type of material that you wanna go for. If you wanna go for exotic, if you wanna go for all epi, or if you want some aspects of epi with uh, a few other uh, different types of leather as well. Uh, so you do have quite a bit to choose from. Now, even though I do appreciate so many aspects about this bag, personally, it is not for me just because I'm not too fond of the wave design that it has along the base. I would have preferred it to be a little bit more flat, but regardless, it is a beautiful bag that offers so incredibly much. And again, the fact that it does have the majority of epi leather, I think is absolutely fantastic. So for any of you guys that do have the twist, let us know in the comment section down below. Do you love it? Do you hate it? The more information that you can give us the better, but great question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Samantha Morris. I'm considering purchasing a pre-love Chanel 2.55 reissue 226 in a gorgeous red color. I typically stick with black or nude colored bags, so I'm hesitant to pull the trigger on this. I already have a black jumbo flap and a black small flap and a medium flap in nude. I'm wondering if it's best I hold off and get a reissue in black or if I just go for it and add some color to my collection. Thoughts? Thanks in advance. Um, all right, so I see myself in this question because black is my comfort zone. Black is a no-brainer, especially because it goes with everything and anything in my wardrobe but a red handbag just makes my eyes drool like crazy. You know what I mean? In my experience, the biggest bummer when it comes to colored handbags is that they unfortunately don't end up holding their resale value as well as black. Because with a colored handbag, you have to find that, you have to find the right buyer that's looking for that specific color, whereas black is a lot more universal, you know, in comparison to a fun colored handbag. The biggest exception in my opinion is Hermes, because with Hermes, of course, they do have their staple color, such as black and gold, and those do end up holding their value, but their colors do as well because they are so limited and because they're only available this season and the next season they might have something similar, but it won't look exactly the same. You know, so Hermes in comparison to other fashion houses, other fashion houses will end up having their, you know, their staple black and nude, uh, but as far as colors go, they're not as popular on the resale market as, uh, as Hermes is. So if you want to add a little bit of color variety to your collection, if it makes you happy, if you see yourself using it, then I say absolutely end up going for it. However, if you do have the slightest hesitation, I would just take your time in deciding because you will know if and when you decide to move in that direction or if you end up going for a black reissue. But either way, I wish you the best of luck in uh, whichever one you decide to add to your collection. But fabulous question and hopefully I was able to answer it. And the last question from Monkey. How do you wash your jeans to keep the color from transferring onto your light colored handbags? Um, all right, so sometimes I do end up using either a half cup to a cup of vinegar and I put that inside of the cold water rinse cycle and I feel that that's really made a big difference in being able to lock in that color as best as possible in comparison to not using any type of vinegar. I know some people end up using salt instead of vinegar, but to be completely honest with you, I also have some denim that regardless of how many times I've done this, regardless of how much vinegar I end up using, they still bleed like none other. And when that ends up happening, because I like that denim so much, I just completely avoid using my light colored handbags altogether. You know, I end up going for 
pebbled leather or I go for my black handbags, uh, especially if it's something that I want to use crossbody because I don't necessarily want to focus so much on, you know, is it going to wear okay? Am I getting any type of color transfer instead of enjoying the handbag? So I'll just avoid it altogether and I'll just uh, end up using it with uh, my dark colored handbags. And that's really ended up helping out, you know, but I would love to know if any of you guys have any tips or tricks when it comes to, you know, bleeding denim or when it comes to dye in general, especially when it comes to using your light colored handbags bags, let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. All right, so I do have a question for you. I know that the last time that I incorporated something like this, you guys really liked it. So my question to you is, if you can be any handbag, which handbag would you be and why? Whether it's because of your personality, whether it's because of this, that, or the other, let us know in the comment section down below. All right, you guys, that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. I think I might be able to see you later on, either Friday or Saturday. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not, the choice is yours. Have a great day.